What's up, Node.js developers? Welcome back to a new Friday stream. And today we have something uh, a little bit different than we usually have on Fridays. We're not gonna build a project, a real world project that you usually uh, expect us to do. Today we're actually gonna build the worst volume controls. I've got this idea a couple of weeks ago uh, when I saw a tweet thread and actually a bunch of developers, I think in two, 2017, uh, competed to design and implement the worst volume control uh, on web. I'm super late to this trend, uh, like you couldn't be more late, but I thought like it's a great opportunity for us to see how we can do some of this volume control in React Native. And as you can see, there are a lot of hilarious one, like, um, you, we, we, can, we can look at them to, uh, during today's video. But yeah, uh, we're gonna do that in React Native with Expo. And every dumb idea is actually an opportunity to learn something new. So today uh, we're gonna learn different types of interactions in React Native. Uh, I think in comparison with that web on mobile, we have different types of sensors and other different uh, input methods that makes this challenge way more interesting. So I'm really excited to, to dive into this. We're gonna try to replicate some of the uh, ideas that people already did in, uh, in that competition. Uh, only we're gonna do it in React Native. We're gonna see how we can do that. And by then, we're gonna also get into more advanced type of volume controls. And there, we're gonna work with some sensors data with reanimated to make um, animated uh, volume controls that will not even, not only be useless, but at least they will be beautiful and they will work uh, well. So, are you excited about that? Let me know in the description. And um, for this project, I also provided you with a starter project. So if you're interested to implement some of these volume controls yourself, which I highly encourage you to do because you will definitely learn something new. Uh, then you can download the starter project in the asset bundle. I included it in the asset bundle. You can find it in the description below of this video. And here I included the project uh, which has different screens where we will be able to implement different kind of controls. The default one here, as you can see, it's a normal, um, it's a normal, yeah, like volume control, very similar to what Apple Music has. And actually this player is working so you can r test it in real time how the volume control works. Uh, so yeah, I encourage you to download the starter project, try to implement some stupid and uh, useless volume controls and share them with me on Twitter and I would love to, to see um, your creativity and how you, you will implement them in React Native. Uh, I will definitely want to, to see what you guys come up with. But uh, let's go ahead and start with some ideas. First of all, yeah, let me quickly open like this blog post because I think this one contains uh, some good volume controls from that one. And I think the, uh, the first one and the easiest one is one that works with random values. I think it's this one. You just press on a button and it changes the volume to a random value. That's not how you would expect a volume control to work, but that's the point of today's video. So uh, real quick, let me show you how this application works. Uh, it's an Expo application built also um, with Expo router. So the navigation is handled by the Expo router. That's why in our app folder, these files that we create here, they will automatically be mapped to a new uh, route in our drawer navigator here in our application. And also we have this uh, music player that we can use uh, to, to render on the screen, not to, to have to code it ourselves. Other than that, we have a hook, which comes from our global volume con context. And this hook allows us to globally change the volume uh, that is going to be uh, used by the music player. 
So by using this hook, we can update the volume and it will automatically be set in our music player. So yeah, with this one, we are we have like the the necessary building blocks to, to put together and to focus only on volume controls today. So to create a new one, let's go ahead and duplicate the template uh, file and leave the template for us to, to, to have like a starting point. And this one, let's choose, let's say it's gonna be a random volume control. So for the random volume control, if we navigate to this one random, we don't have any volume control here. So let's go ahead and import a button from React Native. Uh, button. And let's go ahead and uh, render the button below the music player. The title will be something like change volume. Uh, and also we should display somewhere the volume. I think it will be nice to render it uh, in a similar way like with this slider. So let's actually copy this slider from here, from index into random above. The only thing is that I don't want to change the value when we move this slider because it's gonna be handled by the button. And also I want to disable the, the slider not to be interactive, just to display the, the volume. Now, if we go to the random, if I press on the change volume, nothing happens because we have to, pre uh, to call on press event. And whenever we press, let's set the volume, set the volume with a random value. A random value we're gonna generate by calling math.random. And this will generate a value from zero to one. And that's actually, what our volume expects, a value from zero to one, where zero is mute and one is, uh, yeah, full, full sound, full volume. And now if I press change volume, it works. And uh, if you play the sound, like you'll see that it actually works. So very stupid, but here we have our first uh, volume control from our worst volume control series. Okay, so this one was quite easy. We had to work only with a button and to set it using math.random. For the next one, let's go ahead and um, do what? By the way, guys, I will definitely, definitely need a lot of um, recommendation from you or ideas. So if you have some ideas, please write them in the chat. Uh, I would like to, to hear them and we'll see how we can implement them. I want this live stream to be a bit more interactive. So even though like we're gonna start with some very simple one, by the end of the tu this tutorial, I want to get into some interesting concepts that will allow us also to learn something new. Specifically about reanimated, that's gonna be something interesting. Hmm. The next one, you know what? Uh, let's go ahead and create, um, basically list all the post, uh, display, render on the screen. For the next one, let's just render on the screen all the possible values for our volume from one to 100. And whenever you press on one of these values, you're gonna select that. So it's a very similar select box. And yeah, let's see how we can do that here. So first of all, let's duplicate the template in our application. Uh, and let's say uh, list, yeah, list, list will be okay. Now here, we need to render a lot of options, right? So how many options we need from zero to 100, that's gonna be, and that's gonna be like 100 um, digits, we need to, not digits, but 100 cells, we need to render on the screen for these options. So let's go ahead and start with an array of 100, and then let's map for this array. And for every array, let's go ahead and render, I don't know, a view with a text or just a text. Let's start with just a text. And yeah, let's say one here. 
We're not gonna see anything because we have to play a bit with styles. So let's say the color of this text should be white. And still nothing because we are in random. We should go to the list. Make sure when you are uh, working, you are on the right page that you expect to be. So it's still not here. If I put it outside the array, it's there. Array dot map. Okay. We had to fill this array with, with some value, not to have it undefined. But yeah, then we see a lot of values of one. Let's go ahead and actually render the, basically the position of the item, like one, two, three, four, and so on. If we take the value here, that's not gonna help because all our values are actually zero because we filled it with zero. But if we take the index and work with index here, that's gonna be zero, one, two, three, and so on. So I think that's okay, that's good. Uh, now let's put them all in the same uh, in the same row. So for that, we're gonna wrap them inside the view like this. Let's put the array here. And for the view styles, we will say flex direction. We want to render in the same row. Now, they do not fit in the same row, so we also need to say flex wrap wrap to go from a new line if it doesn't fit in the same row. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and play a bit with the text. Um, will I be able to work here with border color white and border with one? Yes, and with padding, or maybe let's do something like a width, like fix width, 20. 20 is too, we need more, 30. Okay, and height as well, 30. And maybe some padding, like five. Not padding, I meant margin. We're gonna get to the padding in a moment. Okay, we have something. Okay, okay. Uh, now we need to align the, the digit in the middle. Mm. Text align center, I think just with I will, I will, I will go, go with a padding, probably. It's a hacky, hacky way, but it allows us to, to do it like this. And later, if I will want to say background color red to highlight it, will it, will I be able? Yes, I will be able to do it. Okay, okay, we have something. So let's also s render something here, a text saying select the desired volume. <laughs> it's so bad, it's so bad. <laughs> I will do it white. Come on. Font size 20, but at least it should look good, guys. Like if it's useless, but it should look good. <laughs> 500, yep. And now these text boxes should have a one press event. And on press, what should happen? We should set the, the volume to that value. So on press, uh, we cannot basically set volume to the index because index is a, is a value from zero to 99. 
we need the value from zero to one. So we're gonna divide this index by 100. And in that situation, we're gonna have our desired volume, right or no? Or should we just add another state variable here? Um, for, for value, set value, use state. Let's start with a 50. And here we're gonna set value to index. Then every time this value updates, so we're gonna use a use effect, we will also update the volume. So set volume to what? To the value divided by 100. Okay, let's see if it will work, but we also need to provide a way to understand if it's selected or not. So here, background color, Let's say if value is equal to index, then the background color should be, I don't know, uh, blue, magenta. Magenta, is that a color? Otherwise it should be transparent. So let's go to the list. Use state is not defined, let's import it here. Use state. Mm, index plus one, I will, I'm working with indexes because I want to have like volume zero. So as you can see, volume is zero, but I set value here. And then press set value index. If value equal to index value. Oh, here, value, no, no, no. <laughs> mm, I actually need that, so I will change this value to here. Let's do selected value, set selected. So where we have value here, selected value, and set selected value, like this. If I go list, where do we still have value? Okay, here. List. Okay, it's 50. And let me see if I can hear something. If it actually works. Yes, it works. This is the, perf this is the best volume control. Should we do four of them border color as well? Okay, maybe margin not five, but two to give them a bit. Oh, this one looks good on my device. Index plus one divided by 100 as the last index is 99. Um, I still want to go from zero because zero is volume zero, basically it's mute. Because if you go with index plus one divided by 100, for the first item, you're gonna do one divided by 100. So that's not gonna be volume zero. But yeah, like I think I can add one more to, to go from zero to actually 100, not 99. I can go here <laughs> and have 100 at the end. But then it doesn't, it's not centered so not 100, yes. By the way guys, if you're interested, I think I can give you access and you can in real life play with this one.
Okay, so we have two down. Any ideas uh, what other volume controls to create? Or maybe, hmm, I'm thinking how to improve like how it looks. Yes, this way with gray looks better. Maybe font weight 500. Come on. What am I doing here? Yes. Uh, and we have a warning, each child in the list should have a unique key. So for that reason, uh, the, the problem here is that we are rendering a lot of text boxes based on an array. And when that happens, we need to provide also a key for our items. So in this case, I'm gonna go with an index. It's not always advisable to add the index as the key, especially in cases where your items can change places. But for us, they do not we will never change places, so it's okay for us to do it like this. Andy, hello. Andy's asking, what's your preferred approach to build responsive UI? To look good on iPhone 14 uh, and iPhone SE. Uh, use flex boxes, use relative, uh, relative spacing margins, not margins, like um, positioning. So if you are trying to center something instead of, I don't know, setting like margin right 30 pixels and it looks okay on your screen, you would actually work with a flex box to center that item on the screen and it will be centered both on iOS and on Android. And avoid using like uh, specific widths for, for things that you want to make like full screen or relative to the screen size. For example, if you want to, to, to make a button like full screen, don't put like width 393 pixels, put width 100% or 90% or 70% and so on. Work flex one and then work with margins. Marius, that's a very good idea. Volume control by having a circle, you can drag the circle margin. If the circle is small, volume is low. If the circle is big, volume is maximum. That's a very good idea. Let me uh, uh, note it down. And I think when, when we will get to, to this type of gesture interactions, we can implement that, definitely. Thank you. Keep them coming, guys. I'm really interested in your ideas. Um, I can go with with a picker, like this is a very basic one. Uh, a picker is a basic um, input type that we have on mobile devices and uh, I can go with, with that. I think it's gonna be not that hard to implement, but also fun to, to see how the picker works and how to, to work with it. So let's go ahead and install this speaker library using npx expo install react native picker and we're gonna open the, the documentation. So let's go ahead and install the picker library for the next one. Okay, that after that is going to be installed, like we have to go ahead and create a new page based on our template. And let's do pick picker. Let's close ours. Here we have it. And the picker, let's see in the documentation. Uh, it will look a bit different on Android and iOS. Like on Android, it's gonna be like a drop down, And on iOS, it's gonna be a native picker that, that we see on iOS. So I really think that it's gonna be hilarious to have like this type of picker for volume control. 
uh, let's go ahead and uh, implement it. So that let's copy the, the, the example from here and add it in our picker file. Let's go to our navigate to that one and we need to make sure to import it. We're also gonna need a, st uh, a state, so import. Um, import use state and also use effect because we're gonna work in a similar way as we had in the previous example from React. So here we're gonna have a state. Let's basically take it from our list because it's gonna be the same. Like we have a state for the selected value that we control here. And every time this state changes, we're gonna also update the volume in, the, in that list in, uh, from our uh, global context. Now, if we go to the picker here, it's not there because the selected value is selected value and on value changed, we're gonna have set selected value with the item value. And then for the actual pick picker items, okay, there it is. <laughs> uh, for, this one. No, set selected, we're gonna work with item index. We don't even need the value here. So this one is gonna be one and we're gonna have like similar to how we did the array here. So we are generating an array of 100 values. We're filling all of them with zero. Then we are mapping and based on its index, we are rendering a picker item with the index as the label. And then we need to close this one. So if we go to picker, okay, we didn't like it. Maybe it actually needs the value. So let's also say index. <laughs> My computer didn't like that one and just turned off. Let's try to run again the application. Oh, you should add, are you sure you want to, uh, uh, to change the volume too to make it more annoying? Yes, great idea. I love it, thank you. <laughs> uh, so if we go to the picker here, oh, come on. What am I doing wrong here? Hmm, is this because of this array? I don't know, let me try to, to take it easier on it. Picker. No, it closes. It doesn't like this type of mapping. What what does the log say? Check the render method of template. Each child in the list should have a unique. That's the error. Okay, okay. The key is going to be index. So now Let's go to this one. No, it's still the same. Don't don't make me do. Oh, probably the label maybe it should be to string. To string. What do you think? It can be, it can be. 
but give me a, an error. <laughs> Don't just close the application. Picker, yes. Okay, let's see what styles can we provide here. Style, color, white. Maybe for this one. So, style, item style, yes, and this one we give it here, item style. Okay, here we have it. So if we go to picker, Perfect, and let's deselect this one, selected value and item index. Or even like the value, like we can work with value. Because we set it here in the item itself. And now we can go from zero to 100 and we see that it goes to 50 because our state is 50. And if we change, it changes. Perfect, and I will add here the same, select the desired volume. And I just want to test it. Yes, it works. <laughs> yeah, I can stop here, like I think this is the, the best one. <laughs> It's a bit hard to um, to scroll on 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 um, here, but on the phone I think it should be perfect. All right, so one more down. We have we have already three of them: the random, the list, and the picker. The next one that I thought of, I think uh, I think I haven't saw it here. So I really hope that this is original. So what I'm thinking is to work with binary numbers. Yeah, I haven't seen it here. So it, it should be bind it it should be original. But what's original nowadays? Nothing, of course. So for the next one I'm actually thinking about yeah, doing working with binaries and having like a couple of digits that we can change in binary and that will translate to the volume from zero to to 63 or from zero to 100, we'll see. So, shall we give that a try? Yes, I think so. For this one, uh, let's go ahead and yeah, like create a new template. And this one is going to be binary. Uh, let's go ahead and display these digits. So I'm gonna display them in a view. Let's start like this with justify content, not justify content, but flex direction row. And I want to render a couple of digits here. The digits, let's display them with with a view and inside a view a text that will render either a zero or a one. Let's go to the binary page. The text, let's go with a style color white. Okay, this view I want to give it I think I can go ahead and work with arrays here as well. So array, but I don't need a lot of digits. I need, I think, five or six. We'll, we'll double check how many binary digits do we need uh, for the maximum value that we want to represent, which can be 100. So let's say it's uh, six, let's fill it with zero. 
Oh, but actually that one can be our state with digits. Yes, that one will, will be our state. So digits, which is binary digit, set digits, use state. And we're gonna initialize it with array field zero. Now, let's loop through these digits. Let's map, I mean, for this digit. And for every digit that we have, let's render this view. And instead of zero, let's render actually the, the digits from the state. Let's go there on the binary. Okay, we have something. So let's style them. Uh, I don't know, I will style them with some kind of boxes. So let's go ahead and do a background color or even white. Uh, let's do, I don't know, flex one to take the whole space there. Don't need this one here. Maybe some margin. Then Or maybe instead of flex one, should we work with a fixed width, like 50? Go back to binary. Ah, flex one will be okay. Uh, height 100. Let's align items center and justify content center to make them the text centered vertically and horizontally binary here. And for the text, let's do font weight, bold and font size, I don't know, 20, 24, 30, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, what I want to do is whenever we press on one of these digits, I want to update it from zero to one. And if it's already one, from one to zero. So this view will become a pressable because I want to handle press events. So let's import pressable, transform from the view to pressable. And now we can also add a one press event. On press event, what should we do? We should from these digits in array. So let's do set digits. I want to update the digits at index. I don't know, at this index, I, at position I. No, no, no. Um, existing digits, or let's say current digits. So with a current digits, I want to say current at i is equal to the inverse value of current. So if current at i is equal to zero, then the value should become one, otherwise zero. And then I should return current values. Doesn't work. Each child in the list. Yeah, we need to provide the key here, but that's not the problem. If I just change it like this, will it work? No. Uh, because I need to copy them. B 
binary. Yes, and now I can get back to this one. Or here we can check like if digit, I don't know, digit. Or well, let's say updated. Okay, perfect, perfect. Uh, I like it so far. And out of these digits, we should uh, create, we should transform from from binary to decimal. What else I want to do here? Maybe. So whenever these digits update, so let's go ahead and define the use effect. when digits update. What we want to do is we want to transform from binary to decimal. There is a way to do that. So if I will do console warn, for example, parse int and provide here a string of, for example, one zero one zero one zero and provide here also the, um, uh, the how is it called, the radix. Then it's gonna parse it from here and return it in decimal. So we see that it's 42 right now. And if I change it here from zero to one, that's 58. Okay, so that means that we need from these digits, which are an array of numbers, we need to create a string and then using parsing to parse them back. So we're gonna do digits dot, um, join like this, zero, 32, 48, 49, yes, perfect. And now the maximum uh, volume that we can get out of this one is 63. So that's okay. I think, I, think I, I like it because it doesn't have to go all the way to 100 because I can go ahead and do set volume with this value divided by 64 or 63. I don't know, 64 I think to go from zero to 99, from zero to 0 0.9, basically from zero to one excluding. So if that's gonna be it like this, let's give it a try. Yes, it works. And let's give it an, a title here. in binary. Yes, I love it. So perfect. This one is done. Something to, to be more programmy, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing here. Okay, that one will work. Okay, any other ideas, guys? What, what else should we do? So, so far we have the random, we have a list, we have a picker, and we have a binary.
let's let's implement that with are you sure you want to to update uh, and let's make that one super safe so behind tv is recommending to do one where whenever you try to change the volume it will ask you like are you sure you want to to to, to change the volume to the value so i'm gonna start with the index actually because let's provide a normal volume control but ask the, the user if he's sure he wants to do that. So let's do an index copy. And here, um, yeah, alert or double confirm. Double confirm is here. So here, what we're gonna do on value change Uh, it will not work with on value change, but with on um, pointer down or which one? There should be one when we um, we stop. On sliding start, on sliding complete. Call back, call when the user finishes changing the value, this one. So on sliding complete equal, we're gonna get the value. And using an alert, let's ask the user. Alert dot alert. I need to also uh, uh, change this one because we don't want to change the volume when we change this one. Are you? Are you sure? the volume to let's say value and let's go to the double confirm let's change it alert is not imported we need to import it from react native Are you sure? Are you sure you want to change the volume to 0 0.2? Okay, let's uh, do value multiply by 100 and let's do math.floor and then say percent. <laughs> like 63%. And for the alert, you can provide here the buttons that you want to, to have. So the third one is the buttons. Let's go ahead and have a type or alert buttons, text on press style, text. Yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. On press. On press, we're gonna change the volume with the value. And let's provide another one for cancel. Okay, double confirm one is created. Thank you for the idea, by the way. 
All right, so I think we are done with some easy and simple ones. Uh, so far we have created a couple of them. Uh, now I want to get into a bit more interesting, something related to uh, animations or the sensors of the, of the phone and so on. For that, I'm gonna take advantage of the uh, reanimated. We're gonna use reanimated for it to, to add some animations, to spice it up a bit. And also what we are interested in is in a hook that allows us to run animations based on sensors. So if you look at the hooks here, there is this use animated sensor that uh, allows us yeah, to, to run animations based on the accelerometer, the gyroscope, gravity, rotation, and so on. So that's gonna be a fun one. I don't have a lot of experience with these sensors and like with how all of this 3D world works. But uh, it's gonna be fun, fun to, to, to try it out and see how we can do it. <clears throat> the first one that I want to do is uh, very similar to this one here. From this design, as we can see, like you, you are able to, to drag the box in order to make the, the slider move based on the gravity. Uh, this is the first one that I thought like, oh, it would be so nice to implement with, with an animator because we can actually hook to the gravity sensor of a phone and basically move a phone in our hands in order to move um, the volume control. And I wasn't the first one to think about that because someone from software mentioned already implemented exactly what I'm, I was thinking about. So shout out to Kakper. I guess I pronounced it correctly. Uh, so yeah, that's what, what he did. And basically you're moving the phone in the hand and this one changes the volume control. Let's have a look and try to implement it ourselves uh, in the project. So for that, first of all, we will need to install the reanimated in our expo application. So let's grab the npx expo install command. Is it already installed by default? Reanimated. Actually, yeah, it's installed by default. Okay, perfect. Then we don't have to install anything. We can right away implement it. So let's go ahead and create a new one based on the template and call this one gravity. Gravity. Perfect, here we will also need the, let's navigate here to the gravity. We will also need the volume control from our basic one from index. So let's grab it from there as the slider like this. Okay, I will also need to run it on my physical device to, to see the changes. So the first things first, let's go ahead and import the use animated sensor from React Native Reanimated. And based on this one, let's start working with it. I'm gonna open the documentation for user animate, animated sensor. And when we are working with it, maybe they provide them. Yeah, they provide an example. So here is the animated sensor, sensor type. So sensor equal use animated sensor. Here we need to specify the type. We provide here sensor type. And the one that we are interested in is in the gravity. We want to know based on how we hold the phone, where is the gravity pulling on which axis. To have a look at that, we can we can uh, do what? We can define um, we can define an animated style that will rotate basically 
we're, we're gonna think like what it will do. Like we want to rotate our slider left and right based on this gravity. So for that, we need an animated style. So let's go ahead and grab it. Use animated style. And uh, slider view style equal use animated style. And this one should return the style that we want to apply. Okay, but uh, what I wanted here to say is let's console log sensor dot value sensor dot sensor dot value value dot and here there is there are x y and z. Actually, I think we can destructure. Oh, why I'm not sharing the code. Sorry, guys. So what I did is in our gravity.js file, we imported use animated sensor from reanimated and the sensor type. And this, this is how we um, hooked into the, the gravity sensor. And the next step is based on the sensor value, we're gonna create an animated style that is going to control how our slider looks on the screen. Before that, I want to check the sensor value and this sensor value has X, Y, and Z. Let me quickly render them here, X, Y, and Z. And open up, I'll open my phone. Let me open the application on the phone to be able to rotate it in the hand. Come on. Why are you not running? here downloading here we have it gravity use animated has to return an object yes the hook use animated should return some style so let's return an object let's go back to the to the gravity and we right away see the changes. So if I'm gonna go ahead and rotate the phone in this direction, as you can see, the first value, which represents the X axis, specify, uh, changes the, um, the value of the gravity from minus nine to nine on the other direction. So that means that the rotation that we're looking for, for is the, X, the gravity that pulls on the X axis, the X one. Okay, perfect. We're gonna only keep that one for now. And what should we do with that? Well, let's go ahead and rotate the slider that we see on the screen. So, the style prop for rotation, uh, we can rotate based with styles using a transform. And here in the transform, we can specify how we want to, um, to transform. We want to rotate on what? If I'm not mistaken, we are, we are gonna rotate around the Z axis. So if I specify here, I don't know, 30 degree, Nothing will change because we are not yet using this slider view style. What we have to do is to give it to the view that contains our slider. So let's go ahead and add it as an additional style here besides this static styles as the slider view style. 
Still, nothing is gonna happen because this is a normal view, but in order to animate something, it should be an animated component. So let's import animated. Animated from React Native Animated. And animated contains animated uh, view. So animated view. Uh, rotate. If I do here background color red. Oh, because we are in the default. If I go into the gravity, yeah, make sure, okay, it, it works, it works. So as you can see, the background color red we don't need, but the transform and rotate Z, if we provide here positive value, it rotates on, in the, that direction. If pro we provide negative value, it rotates in the other direction. So, what we're gonna do is actually we're gonna use the value from our sensor for this value. Let's do it like this, x degree and yes, it works. I'm gonna connect my phone and let me Let me try to show the other screen of my phone. Here it is. So now if I rotate the phone in my hand, as you can see, this bar rotates together with it. We can multiply this by two and this will increase the amount of rotation if that's what we want, save. And now it will rotate more, as you can see. Uh, and even like you can you can play with this value to to make it look how you want it to look. That's the, that's the first part and that's the easy part to rotate based on where the gravity is pulling. The second part that will actually pull the value of the slider is going to be a bit more interesting. Uh, for that one. For that one, we're gonna need a um, shared value that is going to represent our volume. So let's import use shared value. And based on this value, we're gonna be able to drive like the, the position, the animation of the, the, the slider. So let's go ahead and do um, shared volume equal use shared value. We're gonna start with, I don't know, zero maybe. <clears throat> now we need to hook the value of our slider, this value to our shared value that we define here. We can no longer work with state here because the value of this uh, variable is going to be controlled and updated based on the sensor on the UI thread. So on this thread, we should work with shared values to take advantage of performance benefits. That's why instead of working with a volume and set volume, which is a React state, we're gonna work with a shared volume, which is a shared value. And this one can be accessed both from the JavaScript thread and from the UI thread. So uh, our next goal is to send that value here to the slider. To do that, as I said in the previous uh, step, we need to make the component an animated component, like we did here with a view, animated view. The, thing, the problem is that we cannot 
animated doesn't have a slider. Slider is not a, a primitive React Native component. Slider is a custom component. But it's okay because we can create using create animated. How create animated component or how? What's the, what's the function name? Create animated. What's the function called? Um, Reanimated create animated component. Use animated props, create animated component. I think it's that one, create animated component. Create reanimated, create animated component. Create animated component now animated slider equal create animated component and we pass there the slider now instead of using the, the slider there we're going to use the animated slider which is the same slider but uh, uh, exp and if is not a function shouldn't be um, is it animated dot create animated component yes that's right uh, so as I was saying, it's the same like slider, but now we are allowed to animate this slider. Okay, uh, previously we saw how we can animate the style using the use animated style. Now the problem is that in our situation, we don't want to animate the style, we want to animate a property, the property value of this slider. So how can we do that? We can do that by using the hook uh, use animated prop. So let's go ahead and def import first of all use animated prop. Use animated prop props and define here the slider props equal use animated props and here what we want to return is we want to return the value the value prop which is should be equal to the shared volume dot value now when shared volume dot value changes it will automatically update these slider props and the last thing is to send this to the animated prop and slider props and to comment out the value. Okay, uh, what do we have now? Uh, if this one is zero, if I add it to one, will it change? Not sure, probably not but use animated props. Will it actually change if I do, I don't know, uh, sensor dot, sensor dot value dot X? Will something change here? Oh, I should go to the gravity, okay. Yeah, as you can see, it's already working. Something is happening there because we mapped the value. Uh, we mapped the value to the sensor value. So when we are moving into that direction, it's going to be like maximum. If we're moving that direction, it's going to be minimum. 
But uh, what actually we want to do is we actually want to simulate a bit of a physics and we want to, uh, to accelerate in one direction when we are moving in that direction and, uh, and so on. So for that reason, we're gonna move back to mapping the value to the shared volume value. And now nothing will happen because we are not updating anywhere this shared vo vo volume. Where do we want to update? Well, we want to update every for every frame. Every frame that we update the UI, we want to calculate where should be the volume based on the gravity. Should it be more to the right, more to the left, and so on. To implement this kind of frame-based uh, calculations and animations, we will use the use frame callback. <clears throat> this uh, use frame callback, let's do it here, use frame callback. The callback will contain the frame info and we can do calculations here. So for example, we can console log frame info and you're gonna see what information it has. Uh, I think I need to stop it so we can focus on one of them. Let's remove it. And we see the values are time since first frame, time since previous frame, timestamp and so on. So what we are interested in is in this time since previous frame to know the delta time, like how much time should we uh, consider for updating? Because if we are moving, for example, one meter per second and one second passed, we want to move the ball one meter to the right. That's how physics works. If, we, if only half a second passed, we're gonna divide the, the speed by the, but that, by, by that number and we're gonna get half of a speed. Probably I'm not the best at explaining math in this situation, but what we, are, what we want to get from here is the delta time and the delta time is gonna come from frame info dot time since previous frame. For the first frame, it's gonna be null. So let's check if it's null, let's stop here return. Otherwise, I want to update the shared, value, shared volume value. I want to move it just a bit in the direction of, uh, of where the gravity pulls. The gravity pulls into this sensor.sensor.value.x. So if I leave it like this, Uh, nothing is gonna happen. So if I go to the gravity, okay, it works, but it goes very fast. Because first of all, we need to multiply this gravity by the delta time in order to have smooth animations and to move only with the amount of, of, of uh, only the distance relative to the time that passed. Now it's still a lot. And for that reason, we need to decrease this by multiplying with a constant like 0 0.001. This is gonna be like a, like a speed, like how fast do we want this to, to move? Probably too much, too much. Come on. Come on, why it's not opening? 
Where is them? Downloading, let's wait, and here we have our gravity. Oh, and it works. Still, to, uh, the speed is too much, so I'm gonna decrease it more. Save. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. If we hold it this way too long, the value goes, basically, it becomes too big. And then we, when we come back, we need to wait a lot of time for it to come. So it's not visible that the, the, the shared volume value probably became like millions, but what we are interested in is to clamp it from zero to one. So we can say shared volume value. I don't know, like is equal to math dot maximum between shared volume value and 100. And this way we will clamp it, not we need to do minimum between these two and then maximum between that one and zero. And this way we will clamp it from zero to 100. This one is the default. Come on, gravity. And no matter how long we will keep it this way, when we move it back in the direction, it will start moving. No, actually it's not working. Minimum between the value and 100 and maximum between the value and zero. Gravity, one, two, three. So for, oh, I know, I know, I know, I know. It actually shouldn't be 100, it should be one because we are working with zero to one. Yay, now it lo works better. Okay, so something is working. It's actually moving based on the gravity, but it's moving in a linear way. So for the next one, like so far, uh, I've been able to do it myself, but at this moment I wanted to check like the, the source code from, uh, from Reanimated because they implemented this one. So they also implemented an acceleration uh, parameter and that gave this animation an even more realistic look. Because at the moment, if we put it this way, it will go in that direction. I can even slow it down a bit for it to move slower. So basically, if it's things like this, it moves constantly with the same speed. In a real life, the ball will actually pick up speed as it moves along, right? Because if it stays like this, it will pick up speed more, 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 more until it reaches the end. So this part of picking up speed is the acceleration or, or how fast should the, the, the speed increase every frame. And let me try to, to implement it based on my, <laughs> my math knowledge. So basically for the acceleration, we're gonna need another value. That is a volume, our is acceleration equal use shared value zero. Now here in every frame, our acceleration should Our acceleration 
should basically increase also based on the on the gravity acceleration increases based on the gravity multiply by that time maybe we will need a bit more to, to decrease the, the value of this acceleration and changing the value of our shared volume should also work based on the acceleration so do we need the delta time here or not the acceleration i think we mm, the delta time is already in the acceleration no, I think we might actually need it. And we should do value. Acceleration dot value multiplied by sensor value, multiply by delta time and then the speed. Hmm, I messed something up. So initially acceleration is zero. We turn the phone a bit. We are not picking up. We are not picking up based on the gravity here, but based on the acceleration. So I think we will remove the gravity from the, from the position of the volume because that one is taken into consideration here. Come on. Hello, Lucas, how are you doing? So something is happening. Should we acceleration value? Should we multiply this to decrease this one as well? Oh, and I think that we have the same problem with acceleration. It increases unlimited number of time. So when we reach, if the volume reaches zero or the volume reaches one, then we need to reset the acceleration because we we basically stopped in the in the wall does it work if i re reduce the speed reduce the expectation does it pick up speed yeah i think it does like slow 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 and here faster Yes, yes, yes. Now, as you can see, when moving it like this, it behaves like an actual ball. Like it, it will not start moving in the other direction right away, but it will start changing the acceleration. So it actually behaves like a ball. It's just a matter of 
of how fast you want to change by acceleration and this will imitate like how um, how heavy is the ball because right now it the ball seems quite heavy like it takes a lot of time to change the acceleration in the other direction so if we want it 0 0.5 Yeah, something like this. Let let let's have a look at the um, at the source code from software mention from reanimated. Oh, but I like this one. Where is it? It should be here. <laughs> Need some ASMR coding to relax. <laughs> um, give me some ideas, Lucas, for useless or for the worst volume controls. I'm interested. Let's compare with with this one. Or specifically, I want to check the um, the physics logic. So they have here the acceleration, which is the animated sensor. So for the acceleration, we're not taking into consideration the delta time. No, 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 wait a second, no. At the end of the day, like they are still like, for me, yeah, like they are still multiplying the, the sensor value by a constant, like how heavy you want the ball to, to feel, and then multiply by delta time. Yeah, that's, that's what they have. Then for the X, they are just simply, yeah, for, the, for modifying the, hmm. Here, maybe I should reduce. Okay, that's too fast. And reduce it on the acceleration side, zero, zero, 001. Hmm. Okay, you need to do, it's very hard to balance this one. The ball seems to move very fast. So the acceleration changes very fast. I want to decrease this one. Oh, to decrease, we need to increase the, this number, right? Gravity. Okay. Perfect, I like it. It doesn't have friction. Huh. That's another thing if you're implementing very physic, if you want to be very um, close to the physics, you also need to implement the friction because if it, if the X is at zero, it will still move in that direction. But I think it, it looks right, it looks nice. Come on. <coughs> what other ideas can we implement based on this, um, based on these interactions?
I'm thinking to do something with the actual rotation of a device on the table. Like it would be a knob, you know, to move them. Um, But you know what? Uh, the problem is that at the moment the volume will actually not work because we are only updating the shared value. We're not updating the vol volume in um, in, the in the global state. So maybe uh, we can also in the use volume context, we should add a shared volume and yeah, let's do a shared volume. which is gonna be, I don't know, value zero. And let's add the shared value here. Shared volume equal use shared value from reanimated. And let's export this one from here. And in our gravity, instead of declaring the shared volume here, let's import it from use volume, shared volume. And inside our music player, let's specify how do we want to take it. Is it an animated one or a, a proper one? So let's say it's an animated, animated. So in music player, we can receive this animated prop, which can be initially false. And that's going to be the shared volume. So basically const volume equal, if it's animated, it should be shared volume dot value. Otherwise it should be this uh, normal volume. Will it work? I don't know. Let me, let me try. If I go back to the default, mm, what system capture? No, no, no. Okay, don't like it very much how it works. Wait a second. So music player volume, if it's animated, is a shared volume. Otherwise it's a normal volume. Lucas, great idea. Lucas is suggesting to uh, make the volume higher, the higher you yell into the phone. I have, a, I, I was thinking about that the same. Let's, let's try to see if we, we can implement that as well. I just want to make sure that it, it works here. Come on. Okay, this one works if I go to the gravity. We broke it. Gravity, music player is animated <laughs> equal true. Then here, we're working with this shared volume. Oh, 
on value chain should not be here actually. Why it's not working? Shared volume coming from the that one. Not a number, not a number, not a number. Por qué? Oh, because uh, in the volume context, I think we should initialize it with zero. And yes, it works. And it actually controls the volume. That was what I was worried about. But now we hooked it up and this shared value, the, the, um, the position of our slider here actually controls, controls the volume. So I'm happy with that. And what I wanted to, well, I said that I wanted to implement something with rotations, right? like um, some kind of a knob, but the knob will be the actual physical phone. So for that, let's go ahead and create a new uh, screen here based on the template. This one will be rot or yeah, rotate. So again, we're gonna work with um, with a use sensor, use animated sensor, use animated sensor. And the sensor, let's also import sensor type. Let's do sensor. dot rotation rotation um, something with mm -hmm. like um hmm i don't know i don't know i don't know how to do it but we're gonna think about it let's do um Let's just console log sensor dot sensor dot sensor dot value dot what? Oh my God, there is so many values here. Let's go with this free pitch. Roll and this one that I cannot pronounce. Okay, if I go here to the rotation, we should see these values. All right, uh, let's go ahead and, is, they are not gonna update because they are, um, they are on UI thread. So I think we're gonna still work with style. So animated style equal use animated style let's make sure to return here an empty object for the animated style 
And here, let's go ahead and just console log these values. Pitch, roll, and yo, yo. <laughs> And let's console.log. So I want to put the phone on the table and rotate the phone on the table. When I rotate the phone on the table, I want to check which values are actually updating. Stop, 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 please stop, 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 stop. What's happening? Where do I have another console log? In the gravity. So, when I have a phone on the table and I rotate it, which value actually changes? I don't know. I think it's the last one. Yes, it's the last one. So it's this, this one. But of course we can look through the documentation. I don't think it will help us a lot, for example, the use animated sensor. For the sensor type, we have rotation, measurement output as rotation vector. XQ in a normalized, normalized quaternion. I remember like these words only visually <laughs> from the time that I was, I was working as a game developer. But right now, like, we do not make any sense to me. So phone. Maybe we can, yes. Maybe we can see um, visualization. Roll is that one. Yes. It's the, the last one, yo, 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 yo. How do you pronounce this? I don't know. But it's this one that we are interested in. And this one goes from, I think, in radians. So if I console log only this one, Yes, yes, it works. So the north, I think should be, we should have some kind of a dial or a knob that we can rotate. I don't know, give me some ideas how we can take the to rotate the knob, the phone. I am out of ideas. How is this device called that shows north? <laughs> I know it in my language, but how is it called in uh, in English? Compass man, 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 compass. To do something with compass and volume control. Hmm. 
Ta 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 ta. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's an interesting uh, idea. But does it actually show where is north? Okay, more. This is now. And if I look into my application, moving it this way. Yeah, no idea if that's, that's what I'm looking at. Maybe some with no volume control. Where we will m rotate. Yeah, I think I think I have something. Like some some kind of this volume control. But I need it in two layers. One which is the knob and another one that will that will move. <laughs> this kind of knob. Okay, okay. I don't know how to, to implement this one. So you'd have it like a knob, rotate. Cannot put it together in my in my brain. I think I'm <laughs> I'm already tired of useless and um, in worst volume controls. Um, yeah, look, I think that we can, uh, we can stop here and I really want to see what you can implement based on this idea. Go ahead and try to implement it yourself. You can download the project, the example, the template from the description below. And also I'm going to put the source code with everything that we did today and get creative because after two hours of coding, I'm already don't have ideas how to implement that one. But there is something like I have this idea with rotation, with a physical knob and to, to rotate it. So maybe if I will, uh, I will put it together, I will share it with you. So if you enjoy this one, make sure to subscribe to the channel, uh, not to miss any future videos. Usually on Fridays, we do much more uh, useful projects, but I hope you enjoyed this one as well and you managed to learn something new today. Uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a great experience to, to look at different interactions that we can build. And uh, yeah, I will see you next.